Good evening. Today we will be discussing on the infraclavicular brachial plexus block. General principles of nerve blocks. First, we should do a full anesthetic assessment, which includes history examination and investigations, and obtain a valid consent. Indications for nerve blocks includes to avoid general anesthesia due to poor health, post-op nausea vomiting or desire for early discharge from hospital, early return to normal diet, especially in diabetic patients, for post-operative analgesia, which allows effective physiotherapy, improvement of blood supply to the surgical area, and early immobilization of operative area, such as tendon repair. Contraindications for nerve blocks includes absolute and relative contraindications. Absolute contraindications are patient refusal, infection over needle puncture site, and local anesthetic allergy. Relative contraindications include coagulopathy, general sepsis for neuraxial block, uncooperative patients, and peripheral neuropathy. Performance of the block Full resuscitation facilities must be available and full monitoring according to AAGBI standards. Available personnel should include anesthetist, assistant, and a person to provide emotional support to the patient. Equipment needed includes the ultrasound, resuscitation drugs including intralipid, nerve stimulator, insulated short bevel needle, oxygen supply, local anesthetics and additives. Calculate the required dose and do not exceed maximum local anesthetic dose, etc. Confirm consent and site or site of the block, sedation with midazolam and fentanyl, aseptic technique, Don hat, mask, gown and gloves, prepare the skin with 0.5% chlorhexidine in 70% alcohol and wait until the skin is dry and drape. Analgesia includes fentanyl and subcutaneous injection of 1% lidocaine at the point of needle insertion. Techniques includes the ultrasound guided technique with or without nerve stimulator and landmark technique with nerve stimulator. Avoid intraneural injection to reduce the risk of nerve trauma, using ultrasound guidance, reposition the needle if contractions occur at less than 0.2 mA during nerve stimulation. Impulse duration should be 0.1 ms, set at 1 to 2 mA initially. As the needle approaches the likely site of injection, decrease down to 0.3 to 0.5 mA. At this stimulus, the needle tip will be 1 to 2 mm from the nerve. Reposition the needle if opening injection pressure is more than 15 PSI. Avoid excessive needle passes or injections. Use short bevel needles. Ballers observe and reposition needle. Intraoperative measures. Test for sensory and or motor block prior to inflation of tonicate and surgical incision. Full monitoring as with general anesthesia. Beware of local anesthetic toxicity. Separate the patient from the surgical site with a screen. Use appropriate sedation. Check patient regularly for pain or discomfort. Always be prepared to convert to GA or abandon surgery should local anesthesia fails. Post-operative care includes protection of the operative site from injury, such as using an arm sling for a limb with residual motor or sensory blockade, adequate preloading with analgesia, provide information to the patient on the timing of return of sensation and motor function, Provide contact information to the patient for any queries that the patient might have. Patients with complications that may be due to nerve blocks should be reviewed by appropriate specialists. Infraclavicular brachial plexus block Indications include anesthesia and analgesia for the elbow, distal arm and the hand. Advantages include this block can be performed without shoulder abduction. Using ultrasound techniques, excellent efficacy and complete block within 10 to 15 minutes can be achieved from a single injection. Ability to cite a catheter for post-operative LA infusion for analgesia. Blockade of the phrenic nerve is unlikely with the lateral approach. Approaches available include the vertical infraclavicular block, VIB, Kilka, coracoid block, Riffler, subcoracoid block, lateral infraclavicular block, and ultrasound-guided approach. 
Specific contraindications include distorted anatomy, such as clavicle fracture with deformity, severe respiratory disease, bullous lung disease due to risk of pneumothorax, coagulopathy, and bilateral block. Specific complications include pneumothorax, 0.2 to 0.7%, vascular puncture, subclavian vein or artery up to 30%, Horner's syndrome, recurrent laryngeal nerve block, phrenic nerve block, and inadequate spread of local anesthetic. Administering 30 to 40 ml rather than 30 ml of LA solution may improve medial spread with a single injection approach. Do not exceed the maximum dose of LA. Ultrasound technique. Patient position. Supine with the arm abducted to 90 degrees or resting by their side. Ultrasound settings. Use a high frequency, more than 10 MHz linear probe set at a depth of 3 to 6 cm with a parasagittal orientation. A small curved array probe can also be used to cope with the limited space below the clavicle. Place the probe immediately medial to the coracoid process at the parasagittal plane. The cords of the brachioplexus are seen as hypo or hyperechoic structures positioned around the axillary artery. The lateral cord is lateral or cephalate to the artery, medial cord is medial or caudate to the artery, posterior cord is posterior or deep to the artery. Follow the general measures as detailed. Use an in-plane approach with the needle inserted from the cephalate end of the transducer. Nerve stimulator usage assists in nerve identification. Advance the needle posterior lateral to the artery and deposit LA around the posterior cord, 5 o'clock position on the artery. Inject LA in small aliquots after careful aspiration. The LA should ideally spread up in a U-shape around both sides of the artery to 1 and 9 o'clock. If this does not occur, the needle should be repositioned and LA injected to surround the medial and lateral cords. LA volume 25 to 30 ml is adequate if satisfactory spread is achieved. Landmark technique Endpoints for nerve stimulation Wrist and finger extension is the result of posterior cord stimulation and is an optimal endpoint. Wrist or finger flexion is due to medial cord stimulation. This is also acceptable especially if surgery is at the ulnar nerve territory. Elbow flexion or wrist pronation is due to lateral cord stimulation. This is not optimal and there is a high risk of failure of the block. The musculocutaneous nerve may have left the plexus. Vertical infraclavicular kilka landmark technique. Needle insertion at the midpoint between the anterior acromion and the jugular notch just lateral to the subclavian or axillary artery Doppler pulse. The patient is positioned supine with no pillow. Palpate the subclavian pulse above the clavicle. Insertion point should be lateral to the artery. Mark the axillary artery immediately below the clavicle with a Doppler probe. All three cords of the plexus lie lateral to the artery. Follow the general measures as detailed. Insert a 22 gauge 50 mm stimulating needle perpendicular to the skin in all planes immediately below the inferior surface of the clavicle. Needle insertion point is halfway along the line between the jugular notch and the ventral process of the acromion. The acromion can be identified by following the spine of the scapula anteriorly. The acromion does not move when the arm is rotated, unlike the humerus. The needle is slowly advanced until a suitable motor response at 0.3 to 0.5 mA is obtained. The plexus is usually found at a depth of 2 to 5 cm. If no motor response is obtained, first reinsert the needle more laterally. Do not angle the needle, remove and reinsert. If this is unsuccessful, recheck the landmarks, then reinsert slightly medial to the original puncture site. Inject 30 to 40 ml of local anesthetic in small aliquots after negative aspiration. 
The onset time has a mean of 13.5 minutes. These are my references. Thank you.